The Royal Club is located in a large castle, which is hidden high on a mountain. Its assets exceed 1 billion yuan. It is very difficult to become a member of the club. There is no criminal activity, and the main purpose of the club is charity. The Royal Club has only 58 official members. This place was created not only for entertainment, but it is also an important component of doing business, of course. All this works properly thanks to one person, the head of the VIP department of the Royal Club, Jen Yikun. On a typical morning, the club's manager, Mr. Jen Yikin, goes to the castle gate in a luxury Mercedes-Benz business class car to do his usual business, first of all to accommodate guests and meet with the French. At the same time, a girl on a pink scooter is heading down the same road for an interview for a new position at the club. Suddenly, a car horn honks, she turns her head and sees the face of the general manager through the open car window, and she is amazed he is handsome. Her eyes were so focused on him that she forgot that she had to look ahead and control the scooter. Of course, due to inattention, she loses control and falls to the ground. Only the pink held it open nearby. What a mess. However, the girl did not give up, stood up, pushed the stalled scooter by hand to the castle gate and wanted to enter, but the guard explained that the royal club was a closed club and she could not get in that easily. She showed her pass, which stated that she had been scheduled for an interview and successfully found herself in a waiting room with two other girls who wanted the position. When it was her turn, she thought about recording the interview, but an employee came out and asked if she was Tuan Xuan. He told her to leave her bag and phone according to the club's rules, that the interview could not be recorded, and invited her to the boss's office. The boss, Han Zhen Yikin, looked at Xuan Xuan and expressed his opinion. Looking at this expression, she does not need this job. The girl tries to assure him that she is just very nervous and actually needs this job very much. Mr. Zhang concluded that this job was not for her, stood up and started to walk to the door to leave the office, but Xuan Xuan jumped up and ran after him, wanting to convince the boss that she was the one he needed. Xuan stopped the future boss with a question, as if he already knew she wasn't the right person for him, since there hadn't been an internship and he hadn't even asked a single question. The general manager of the Royal Club explained that he was looking for an assistant for himself and trusted his feelings, but Xuan did not inspire confidence in him. The girl began to convince the boss that his feelings for her could change, that her abilities were also important, and that she could do much more than what was stated in her resume. Suddenly, the door opened, his personal assistant came in, and said that the situation in the lobby now required the presence of the general manager. During the procession, a guy who had applied was standing at the reception desk and wanted to go through, but was stopped, suspecting something strange. Mr. Zheng Yikin, his assistant and Xuan Xuan came out of the office into the hall, and the girl immediately guessed that this strange guy was a journalist and decided to expose him. Mr. Zheng allows her to prove to everyone that he is not an ordinary rich man. Xuan walked up to the reception and looked at the strange man, immediately caught his frightened look, and saw his sweaty forehead, which meant he was nervous. Yeah, I got you the guard as a journalist, empty your pockets. Two guards quickly led the strange journalist out of the lobby. Zuan, pleased with her exposure, approached the assistant general manager, who curiously asked how she knew he was a journalist. Zuan answered without hesitation. First, he looked elegant, but elegant men don't wear facial stubble. Secondly, he has more wrinkles on his left eye than on his right, which means that he uses a camera all the time, and he had his hand in his pocket and his body turned to the side where there were no people, most likely he was holding a recorder. The assistant general manager was impressed by her powers of observation. The girl asked, Where's the man who left her here? The assistant boss asked her to be honest in her statements about the boss. In the future, she would have to call him Mr. Zhang and report personally only to him, and she should talk about the boss as if he were a playboy. Xuan was excited to be hired, but she is still an intern, and if she wants to become an official employee, she has to work hard. The assistant manager of the VIP department, Xu Xinyan, shook her hand sweetly, congratulated her on taking over the new position. So welcome to the Royal Club. After a while, Tuan Tuan was already given a gray work uniform with a white blouse, complete with a vest and a short skirt. Then she found herself in the work area, where a colleague met her, provided her with the necessary materials and showed her the new workplace prepared for her, and also remarked that she was very lucky to be working with Mr. Zheng. Wan Kan's colleague at the next desk also said that she was very lucky to be learning from Mr. Zhen himself. Just then, Mr. Zhen came to Xuan's desk, threw a large folder on her desk, and told her to study it in two days. It contains all the important information about the club members. Xuan Xuan takes the folder, sits down closer to her colleague Wang Kan, and says she has a few questions. Doesn't she know about the campaigns of Rongfa and Line Technologies? They've been in the news recently, and are their leaders members of the club?
And is it true that last year they had some kind of internal illegal trade? Wang Qian put her finger to her mouth and asked Xuan to keep her voice down. Of course they are members of the club, but the employees have a strict policy. They are not allowed to gossip about club members. Xuan doesn't get the answer she wants and is forced to agree to the rules. Just then, Wang Qian's phone rang. She received an order and went to fulfill it. In the office, the employees began to fuss and Xuan asked another colleague what was going on. The guy explained that Mr. Zhang had issued an urgent task. A guest and member of the Royal Club wanted to stay at the Wanghai Hotel. Everyone was working on it. It became known that he had brought a hundred people with him, and the Wanghai Hotel was already fully booked. Everyone was looking for free places to accommodate them. Next, events take place in Mr. Zhen's office. Ms. Lu came there. Since he is busy, she decides to wait for him in the restaurant until he arrives. The new employee, Xuan, wearing a new uniform, runs to Mr. Jen's office to take up her new position as personal assistant to the head of the VIP department and to take on her first task. Mr. Jen gives her the personal task of getting rid of Ms. Lu, who is waiting for him at the restaurant. Xuan is worried that if Ms. Lu starts a scandal or is impolite to her, then let the boss promise that he will not fire her. But there is a detail. Pan Zen wants Xuan to get rid of Ms. Lu for good and that she never comes back to him again. Zuan decides that for such a personal favor for her boss, she should get something in return and demands that Mr. Zheng personally introduce her to the members of the club. Of course he agreed. So Anik Zuan goes to the restaurant. The waiter stops her. Should I serve menu number 13? No, that's okay. They'll probably be leaving by now. Zuan sits down at a table. She introduces herself as Mr. Zheng Yikun's secret girlfriend. Ms. Liu is surprised and thinks she would know if he had a girlfriend. But Xuan X1 emphasizes that she is a secret girlfriend, and if she didn't know about all the romantic relationships in this hotel, she wouldn't be working here. Ms. Lu quickly jumped up from her. Seat accidentally spilled her coffee cup on her gorgeous red dress and nervously headed for the exit of the restaurant. It seems to have worked. Xuan had completed her boss's first task. She didn't expect it to be so dramatic. She was so scared. But she had to move on. She had to report back. The office of the general manager of the Royal Club, a guest from Dubai, and a hundred accompanying persons were registered at the Wanghai Hotel. Seventy-two people were transferred from there to the Lido Hotel. It took eighty-four championship kits and wine. The report to the warehouse was sent, Xu Xinyan reported. Suan enters the office on time to report on the task and is ready to meet the club members. Then the boss has a trick question. Which of Liu's women from Zhaiyang is the mother of his youngest son? Xuan is confused, which means that she hasn't studied the information in the folder about the club members. She gets into an argument. Pan Zen promised her to personally introduce her to the club members if she fulfills his personal task. In response to this, Pan Zen shouted that he first told Xuan Xuan to study the dossier. This must be done first. The girl leaves the office and heads to her desk. Sitting at her desk, Xuan recalls her previous place of employment. She used to work for the popular Pravda magazine. Then her boss assigned her to do an investigative report on the campaigns of Romfa and Line Technologies. It was known from gossip that these are two large corporations that hold the economy together and most likely trade it with each other illegally. There would be a big noise if it came out in the media. Xuan set out to fulfill the assignment and failed. The consequences were disastrous. You need serious evidence to accuse campaigns of misconduct. But that didn't happen. They just fired everyone and closed the magazine. Of course, all the employees blamed Xuan Xuan, explaining that she just wanted to be a heroine, and now everyone lost their jobs because of her. The editor of the magazine already regretted that she had taken the job, because if you can't finish the job, don't do it. With tears in her eyes, empty workstations, Xuan Xuan promises her boss that she will fix the situation because it is on her conscience and put the magazine back in print. Now Xuan sits at a desk in the office of the Royal Club and carefully studies the dossiers of its members, deciding that it is just information and she will handle everything. Two days have passed, she has finally studied everything and is running to Mr. Jen to project her, bursting into the office with joy and hears out. The boss is busy so she just has to wait outside the door. A few minutes later, a guy comes out and addresses Swan as if they had met before, but she takes his words as just a failed attempt to get to know him, quickly finds her way into the office and runs up to Mr. Jen's desk. Confident in herself, Xuan Xuan is waiting for the exam questions, so she immediately blurts out to her boss that she has studied everything and can ask anything. Without asking a single question, Mr. Zheng clearly explained that she had failed the test. Xuan is amazed. Why would the boss say that? He didn't even ask her anything. Mr. Zheng replied that she hadn't even knocked on the door before coming in.
Xuan put on a sweet face and begged the boss to forgive her, to give her another chance because she had worked so hard on the file. The general manager of the club didn't buy her sweet face and her seductive words and still chased her away. On the street, Xuan decides to talk to Xuyi, the boss's personal assistant and driver. First she asked how he lives with such a monster. Then she added that she couldn't understand how a person who was untrustworthy in profits at the expense of others could be a leader. Aksu Xinyan first remarked that Xuan was the first to call Mr. Jen a monster. He also replied that he does indeed profit from the labor of others. But why is he not trustworthy? Xuan says that last time he kicked the guests out of the Wang Hai Hotel. Zudi is surprised because he is sure that the boss could not have kicked anyone out. Hexu goes on to tell Tuan about the Chinese tea ceremony. When Pan Zen, the head of the royal department, meets Mr. Wang, it is a great honor for him. Mr. Wang claimed that no matter how much he was asked, he would not vacate the rooms, but Mr. Jing was frank and said that he invited Mr. Wang to the ceremony on behalf of his other friend, happy to introduce Mr. Fang Su Lai. Mr. Fang came to meet Mr. Wang. It turned out that Mr. Fang owns Lido Hotel. Him Yu Consulting is trying to enter the luxury hotel market, so Lido will be a good start for guests who could not be accommodated in Wang Hai Hotel. Xuan praised Mr. Jen for this shady option and has a lot of respect for the boss that he was able to come up with this way through the neighborhood. She turns around, and Pan Jen is standing behind her and hears everything. Xu didn't even blink to warn her about the boss's appearance behind her back. Xuan calls Xu a traitor. Pan Jen gets into the car, and she and Xu drive off. In the car, the boss and his assistant talk about this new assistant, Xuan. Xu heard her say that even if she had to leave this position, she would do so with dignity. Mr. Zhang noticed that Xuan had changed it all since her internship. It turns out that he knows the story about the magazine and the unsuccessful last article. Chu asked him why he didn't talk to Xuan about the case, why go around it? The boss emphasized that this girl is very subjective and impulsive, and if it wasn't for this article the magazine would have been closed, and a person has to grow, and he gives her this chance. The next morning, Su's assistant comes to Xuan's workplace and asks her what she is doing. Why is she packing on her first day at work? The girl thought that if her boss kicked her out yesterday and said that she had failed to do her job, then she was fired. However, Xu Xinyan explains it was your last day of internship and Pan Zen hired her as a personal assistant, so it's too early to be disappointed. A happy Xuan runs to open the door for Mr. Jen and immediately receives her first task from the boss to bring a case of wine to the first room. Xuan ran to change her uniform and fulfill the assignment. An urgent call, Ms. Lu calls with a strange question to Jen Yikin. Does he have a new girlfriend? She talked to her in the restaurant last time. The boss has to apologize for her, but Ms. Lu does not need an apology. She will still wait for him. Suan carries this case of wine, picks up the recorder at the door, puts it on, and is just about to enter the room when a guy calls out behind her, most likely the new girl, and he recognizes her, and they meet in the boss's office. Frightened, Suan asked who he was. The guy introduced himself, his name was Avon, but the girl didn't care who he was now. And then she thought, now this guy will complain about her to the boss. She needs to hold on to this job and behave. Xuan smiled, said hello, admitted that she was indeed new, apologized if she offended him, and said goodbye. She opens the door of the first room to bring in some wine, and a group of young people is having fun. They invited Avon in, and the girl was told to leave the wine under the table. Putting the bottles out, she discreetly attached a recorder under the table. Avon addressed Xuan, she never said her name. She asked if he wanted to complain about her to the boss. Xuan started to apologize, and Avon suggested that they have dinner together after work, and he wanted to apologize for scaring her. Xuan politely refuses, as if something had gotten to her, and she won't be angry anymore, and there is no need to apologize to her, even over dinner, because she is just an ordinary employee. His friends are shocked by Avon, no one had guessed that he could be like that. In the evening, after the end of the working day, Pan Jin ordered Xuan to work overtime. Where to go? Xuan agreed and stayed at the club after work. It was very late when everyone had left and it was dark and quiet. Taking advantage of the situation, she decided to sneak into Mr. Zheng's office and get the precious information from his personal computer. Of course, the password is there and the boss suddenly appears. Mr. Zheng catches the girl, makes a grab, and puts Xuan on the table. Then the door opens, the lights turn on. Xu's assistant sees this picture of Xuan lying on her back on the table under the boss, politely apologizes, turns off the lights and closes the door. The boss, having caught Xuan in his workplace, continues to hold her down and demands to know what information she wanted to get from his computer. How will she explain it? 
Lying in an uncomfortable position on the desk, Suan confesses that she wanted to find out more about the person she likes. Mr. Jen holds her and suddenly kisses her. He thinks that he should reciprocate to his secret girlfriend and he has no other thoughts but this kiss. The next working day, all the colleagues congratulate Xuan Xuan on her new achievements. Approaching her workplace, she does not understand where her things have gone. Was she really fired? Then Su comes in, congratulates Xuan on her promotion and invites her to see her new office where all her things have been moved. The girl is delighted. Now her desk is in the boss's office. Now that he knows what she likes, she can sit across from him and admire him as much as she wants. Xuan asked him why he put her in his office. After all, many of the girls on the hotel staff like him. Mr. Zheng replied that she was the only one who dared to confess to him, and he sent her out to get a cup of coffee. Xuan goes to get the coffee, and Xu comes out to meet him and immediately asks him how his first day at the new place was. Xuan thinks it's not very good, and would rather say why didn't he save her yesterday when he saw her under the boss's desk. Xu Xinyan reminds him that he is the boss's personal assistant and listens to him in everything, and it was Tuan who illegally snuck into his office. Perhaps his fault is only that he did not report the lock on the boss's office door, which is connected to his smartphone. Every evening after 8 o'clock, the alarm automatically goes off, which means that the two of them were already there waiting for her. Tuan was offended and said she wouldn't talk to Xu for 24 hours, and that she remembered the recorder in the first room, went to pick it up, but couldn't find it, went outside, and there was Pan Jen already waiting for her, holding her recorder in his hand. Swan is shocked, sees two guards coming, and thinks it's over, but the guards report to the boss and leave. Of course, he gives her the recorder, having previously erased all the recordings, emphasizes that the Royal Club values confidentiality above all else, and advises her not to lose personal belongings anymore. They return to the office and Pan Zen informs her that Xuan doesn't have to talk to Xu anymore because he has left and Xuan doesn't understand why he left. Didn't Pan Zen fire him? After all, Xu Xin Yan is capable and honest and he is the only one who can stand up to Mr. Zhen. If he leaves, Xuan will be left alone with the boss. It turns out that Xu just took a day off and today Xuan will accompany Mr. Zhen while in the second room they are waiting for Ronfa shareholder Pan Wan, just the man she needs. A long-awaited meeting, Pan Wan from Rohingfa, his son Avon, the same guy she had seen before, the head of the royal club, Pan Jen Yikin, and his assistant Xuan Xuan, all greeted each other nicely and sat down at the table. The boss orders Xuan to go get two bottles of white wine and bring them from the warehouse. The girl suddenly slipped, fell against Avon, put a bug in his pocket, quickly got up, apologized, and went to get the wine. Mr. Jan notices that his assistant is very nice, and Avon says that she looks very familiar and that he knows her from somewhere. Mr. Jen reminds him, remember that magazine, she's still investigating the case. Avon leaves the room, Tuan sits on the couch, reminds her that he invited her to dinner, she reaches into his pocket, takes the bug, Avon doesn't understand why she was listening in on them. But he's not angry with her, Tuan gets angry, calls Avon a spoiled brat on his father's payroll and leaves. Suan Xuan is packing her things in Mr. Jen's office and her boss takes her by the hand and leads her out of the office to the roof where there are no cameras and no one is listening. Suan panics and wants to scream, but the boss is ready to answer all her questions. She is amazed that he knew she was a journalist right away, but kept her around anyway. Pan Jen believes that investigative journalism is about finding the truth. Therefore, he allows her to investigate in this club, and if she finds any wrongdoing, he assures her that he will not prevent her from publishing it. Suan now acts according to the plan, calls Avon and accepts an invitation to dinner, but not at the club, but elsewhere. The dinner is in a business format and she has little time, so she gets straight to her questions. Was there any internal illegal trade between Rongfa and Line Technologies? She denies it. And one more question last year, Rongfa's shares went up and down sharply, is there anything suspicious about this? He receives a second objection, but the offer to just eat is still there. The only thing Avon can say is that the truth will come out in a couple of months. Suddenly, the boss comes in, what a meeting, he says in a stern voice, like an employee and his secret girlfriend. She has to warn him when she leaves the club during working hours, and she even turned off her phone. Avon guessed that something personal was going on between them. Suan denies it, the boss smiles, it's really a secret. He apologizes to Avon, takes her hand and leads her away from the table, saying that they need to talk urgently, and that Pan Jen has already paid for dinner. Tuan is not happy. Why does he say that? She is not his girlfriend, but the boss reminds her that she introduced herself to Ms. Liu. Did she forget? 
She also forgot about his personal affairs. They are waiting for Mr. Fan from Fan Resort to discuss the terms of his entry into the Royal Club, and Swan, his assistant, must accompany him. Then the action takes place in the club. Swan is scribbling in a notebook, thinking about Mr. Jen. A handsome egomaniac approaches Exu and asks what she is doing here. Xu felt sad at home and decided to come to work. Hexuan guesses that he also knew all about her from the beginning, but he serves the boss and this disproves his guilt, but in return Xuan wants him to arrange a meeting with Ms. Liu. Over lunch, Xuan Xuan decided to confess that she is not Mr. Jen Yikun's girlfriend, she is just his assistant. Ms. Liu replied that she did not want to know anything about the two of them. Xuan promised to be honest, she just wanted to curry favor with her boss. Ms. Liu could understand Xuan, but she couldn't help her. So she decided to ask about Avon, and it turned out that he has a project campaign. Business is going well, there is no shortage of partners, and he has enough of his family's business. Ronfa participates in open tenders every year, in fact, the campaign has long belonged to Avon by default. Of course, Sui confessed to his boss that he arranged the meeting with Xuan, and most likely her investigation took a wrong direction, new misunderstandings may arise. Mr. Zheng decides to help with the investigation and invites Tuan to a meeting with Mr. Liu, a shareholder in Line Technologies. Tuan explains that as a journalist, she has to write the truth. Mr. Liu believes that something was really going on behind their backs, but not what Xuan thought. They were missled six months ago, Line Technologies was planning to secretly buy back Rongfa's shares, and the deal with Mr. Guan was almost signed, but if everyone knew about it, Line Technologies would become the second largest shareholder and their share price would skyrocket, so he blocked all information before signing the deal. Someone found out about the news anyway, he kicked the partner out of Rongfa for breaking the rules, and he forged a report letter and sent it to the media, but Mr. Jen noticed it in time, so the letter didn't have time to circulate. This means that Panzen had a hand in the closure of the magazine. Suan Xuan is crying, she is desperate and angry at the same time, she needs to speak out, and Jen Yikin comes over, because he knew everything from the beginning, why did he deceive her? He destroyed the report and closed her journal and everyone lost their jobs because of it. They worked hard, but they were treated with contempt by rich people like Zhang Yikin. Tuan shouted angrily, ever since she met Mr. Zhang she hates him. He is a terrible person who despises others. The boss did not listen any further, hugged her tightly and started kissing her, for which he received a slap. She continued to scream, and he continued to hold her in his arms. But it was not over yet. In the evening, Avon takes Tuan outside, explains that he knows about the investigation, and that Pan Zen has ordered him not to interfere in a case. But Avon doesn't want to be thought of badly and despised, so he suggests that they go to see a person to find out more. He brought Xuan to her former boss, the editor of a magazine. He explained that the magazine had been losing money for a long time, and that the report was a fake, but he had received a call saying that if he published the report, Ronfa's stock would fall and their competitor Hai Li's stock price would rise. He bought into this and that everything on his competitor. It's a good thing that her story was stopped by Zhang Yikin, so they avoided a court case and criminal liability, otherwise the ex-boss would be in jail now. The shares did not rise, the magazine went bankrupt, and Mr. Zheng did not close the magazine. Suan Xuan is amazed. Why didn't the ex-boss tell her the truth in the first place? Zhang Yikin didn't. He was grateful to him for an article he once published about him when Pan Zen was still a nobody. It helped him a lot to make it. Now he is the head of the royal club. Suan runs to the club to see Mr. Jen, but doesn't find him there. Ask the staff. No one has seen him. Finally, she gathers her things, says goodbye to Xu and Avon, wonders if Pan Zhen will want to see her before he leaves. He reassures Tuan that even if she has made a lot of mistakes, he has been smiling a lot more often lately than before. Avon honestly reports that his Rongfa campaign got a stake through a legal trade. Suan thanked them for everything. She believes that the work is done. It's time to leave. Finally, Xu handed her an issue of the same magazine with a photo of Zhang Yikin on the cover and the same article about him in the middle. A year passed, and Xuan kept thinking about everything that had happened to her at the Royal Club, and she decided to interview Mr. Jen. They meet again. The ranking of the most famous bachelors has recently been released, and Jen Yikin is one of them. Is he really single? It turns out he's not. Who is she? When is she planning a wedding? Is it business or love? Mr. Jen was about to answer, but Xuan did not wait for an answer, got up and walked towards the door. Jen caught up with her. It was clear that she had not changed for this one. She made conclusions without checking the facts, did not listen for a long time, and kissed her, explaining that he had a secret bride, and they continued to kiss. Someone opened the door. Pan Jen shouted to everyone out, and he stayed with Xuan Xuan. 